My name is Donald Weber. I'm one of the teachers here. I'll be moderating, hosting the event. Um, now we have. I am Beatrice. I'm from uh, Maps uh, First Team. Pascal, also Maps One. And I'm Petra, and I'm Maps Two students. And uh, I'm Shabnam Shahid, and I'm the head of department for Master of Photography and Society. So a brief introduction, I'm a photographer first and then also an educator. Uh, I'm from Bangladesh, I was born and brought up there and I, my practice was mostly based there until I came here because of maps and I stayed. And uh, I wanted to start with the story and explain my reasons for why I wanted to apply four years ago, almost four years ago, to a completely brand new program, uh, almost as if to offer myself as a lab rat. Um, and then maybe through that story, explain a little bit about what MAPS stands for and where we're heading towards. So back then, four years ago, I was already a practitioner of trophy, had been practicing for a while, almost a decade, I would say. And I was getting tired of this um, ever going cycle of I don't know, photo festivals, the same sort of discussions that are being uh, happening, the awards that happens every year and being part of that rat race, being uh, nominated as one of the emerging photographers and so on and so forth. And it was a continuous process that happened every year, sort of. And it felt very stagnating. It felt the opposite of progress or any sort of growth. And I was seeking for growth at that time, and I was looking for growth not only within my own practice and change not within my own practice, but also in the photographic field. How do we change that in a way that we can move away from these ever going discussions about uh, topics that keep repeating themselves every year uh, without any solutions being offered? So that's when I came across this program, um, Master of Photography in Society. It was completely new, as I mentioned, and the text read um, something that really attracted my attention and um, immediately sort of connected to what I was looking for. Um, so in the text, it was mentioned that they were looking for conscious photographers. That's the first thing that uh, struck me. And wh what was a conscious photographer? A photographer who thought about the society that they live in and they had things to discuss and things to say and things to criticize, but also solutions to offer and not just discuss aesthetical um, outputs of photography. Um, and that struck me immediately and I thought that this is what was needed in the photographic world. More discussions that are meaningful and more intentions of finding solutions to real life issues and societal issues that we are all plagued with. Um, so yes, uh, moving on from there, four years from now, we're still sort of functioning and building on the foundations, ideological foundations that I saw four years ago. And now I would say the program stands on four pillars, um, I can call it, of uh, making, uh, research, uh, ideological, uh, uh, sorry, self-critical uh, reflection, and uh, impact, social impact. So these are the four pillars that uh, MAP stands on. But the students, I hope, will be describing a little bit in more details uh, in a bit um, about what those means and what we, how we define these terms. Um, but before that, I wanted to say how do we define photography? Um, because we are an interdisciplinary and extradisciplinary program which means that even though our works are not multidisciplinary, it's based on photographic adventures, let's say, and it's rooted in the photographic practice. We move into our realms uh, that are non-photographic. For example, 
visual culture or environmental issues, so on and so forth. Um, so we are deeply rooted in photography, but that doesn't mean that we are traditionally, we define photography uh, traditionally. So we go beyond this um, sort of, to put it simply, uh, this uh, two dimensional understanding of photography, we try to go beyond the frame, but also beyond the surface of the photograph. Uh, but now I will not take too much of your time and pass on the floor to Pascal, who's going to talk about his first year. Thank you. Welcome also from me. Um, I'm in MAPS 1, so I just finished the first uh, MED term. And um, I'm going a bit into detail about what happens in this first uh, um, uh, term. And MAPS 1 in the first term is divided into um, one studio and, um, and another studio, so two studios, and between are little uh, seminars. Um, and when you enter the, um, the program, it just uh, starts. Um, and you are immediately um, involved with enormous amounts of, um, 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 of both a visual, but also um, mainly theoretical um, um, kind of theories and um, books and um, articles and essays. And you approach them with a high frequency, so meaning they change every week and you have to always adapt to what is, um, 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 what is actually the topic in that week. Um, while in classes um, are mainly um, are mainly there to talk about the the readings and discuss them and also um, look at the um, at the visual outcomes, um, your time out out of the um, art um, academy is mainly there to read and to go into your own um, um, thinking processes about how you will then put that reading into your own words, but also into um, into a, into a, into a more um, um, kind of um, into pictures in the end. Um, so, uh, given that you're approaching current issues within the society and um, ex and also um, uh, and also and also look at the underlying um, 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 frameworks. The, the individual results are therefore very much um, your own and they are also always linked within those broader terms of uh, society. So I'll go through a couple of the images that were created during the Studio One first. This is from Charmaine. She, um, um, she was working on, on a news article about racism in, in Dutch football and, um, and recreated these um, these images um, about that news article. The next is Daniel. Um, he, um, while working in a week about archives, uh, he went on and made this box of images which are um, out of his own archives. And you see on the outer part, you see the images that are personal, but that you want to show or he wants to show. While there are also images on the inside of the box, which you can look through um, the whole, um, and, and those images are more personal. So that also goes along with how can we actually access an archive and how, how is that um, um, also a changing um, in your own practice. Um, Lea worked on a, a, on a small um, um, on a small project about um, the rental or about the real estate development in Rotterdam. And um, she uh, made these pictures of um, the, the fences of um, where the new buildings will stand in an environment which is um, really, really different to what is then shown on the, on, on the pictures in the, adver adver ad in the advertisement. Bea worked on an AI or um, like with an AI, um, an AI and um, you can see here the images that AI is, is looking at and, and kind of um, analyzing small parts of the images, which is very interesting because you can see this binary 
um, kind of um, um, image thinking which AI has. Um, there's also this uh, the 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 other um, um, part of the of the of the first term where you go into a um, into a more um, open uh, collaboration with another a person outside of the academy, which I did with my former um, 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 with my former um, 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 speech therapist about how my um, my whole um, how I speak. And so then you also go out with what you already have accomplished or learned within the, the first studio and, um, and and kind of try out more um, in a more collaborative um, environment um, to, to, to generate more of your own okay. things. Now I will pass on to Petra, which is going to talk about her project in MAPS2. So, hi, my name is Petra and uh, I'm a second year student and I heard about MAPS uh, when I was uh, run, when it was running only for half a year, so 2018 or something, uh, which is at a very early stage, but I immediately knew this is what I want after I finished uh, the photo academy I was studying at that moment. This is exactly what I'm looking for because from an early age on, I was very interested in how media and society are intertwined, how they influence each other, and how you can play a role as an artist, as a maker, to show what's going on when it comes to injustice or to change a certain narrative. So you can imagine how happy I was when I was admitted. At this moment, in the second year, you work on a thesis. That's what I'm doing now. That's the main part, what you do. There are, of course, other lessons. For example, the curriculum define your practice, um, where you take a serious look at your practice, your positioning statement, your CV, your network, and how you want to build your practice after you graduated. But the emphasis is, as I said, on your thesis, which is about writing, making visuals, and making impact. And for all those three, you have a supervisor. Um, and I'm just going to elaborate a little bit more on that. Uh, the last couple of years, I focus on topics of female fertility, female health, sexual identity and agency. And my topic is about uh, menopause, how it's depicted, how society deals with it uh, nowadays, how it has been dealing with it in the past, how do media deal with it and what's the influence on women of all this, how they feel, how they behave uh, when it comes to the representation. And I investigate uh, if I can come up with another narrative. Uh, and to what extent that will work. So I'm going to show you uh, some of my research now, some experiments uh, when it comes to the making. Um, and I hope you can see it. Um, when it comes to the making. Um, so, uh, yeah, so for me, uh, the concept of doing research through photography was and still is uh, hard to grasp, but I just follow the advice I get. Um, do something, just do something and see how it talks to you. So this one you see now is called Find a Cougar and it's all about invisibility and how society don't want to see menopausal women. Because though I'm dressed up in and surrounded by a cougar design, I'm not invisible, of course. So it's a way of saying to society, you can try to make me invisible, but that won't work. This one is about medical world that also wants to uh, make menopausal women invisible and they do it um, by initiating uh, and confirming the idea that staying young and fertile is the most important task for a woman. So, um, and I also make this one. This is uh, from a Dr. A. Vogel, homeopathic brand that produces all kinds of remedies against menopausal symptoms. Uh, photographs from ing ingredients, as you can see. And I made some visuals about the last menstruation. Of much more, of course. Uh, this is just a sneak peek. Um, and um, so when you look at those uh, visuals, uh, you can say it when it is a positive way, um, you can call it eclectic. Um, but what to make uh, really, uh, what to make of it? So I talked with my supervisor about it, and then she said, you can call it attempts to make menopause visible um, and reflect on what you think of this in the, uh, this series. See your research as your work, she advised me. And that opened a completely new world for me, so I could go on. 
Um, and I'm still trying to figure out what series I will use. But so that's the role of a supervisor to help you to go on. And in the end, you have to do it all by yourself, of course. But this is a very um, a good way to to get along. Um, so that's for for the learning. And I just want to close up with one last important remark, and that's about your colleagues, your peer students. They're super important. You will be at school with them for two very intense years. Um, and you need to feel safe in the group. You need to feel valued for what you make, for the feedback you give, um, for who you are. Because as a maker, you feel uh, vulnerable. You can feel very vulnerable. So the group's process requires searching for the right balance, searching how to fit in, standing up for yourself, but also respecting others. That doesn't happen over one night. It's hard work, but it's super, super valuable. So if you are submitted, I hope you will be able to form the same kind of safe surroundings um, as I have with my peer students in the second year. So for now, uh, I'll give the floor to Bea, who will tell you something about the alumni. <laughs> Yes, now uh, together with Don, uh, we are going to present you some works uh, from uh, people who already graduated from um, our program. Yes, so what we have here are um, three students work um, who, have, who are now off into the uh, world. So our first student that we have is Lena Holzer. Lena graduated uh, last year as part of our second cohort. So the work that she did in her master's project was asking herself a pretty uh, simple yet pretty uh, diverse question, which is, uh, what's the last time that you've been by yourself? So that means no contact, no nothing. So this notion of solitude or even isolation. And so what she was trying to seek out was this notion, can we gain insight from this idea of solitude? So Lena put herself into uh, three weeks isolation in her hometown, which is a, a smallish town in the middle of Austria. She calls it a, a typical petite bourgeois village. And uh, what she did there is basically asking herself, you know, what happens between the uh, frictions and tensions between the public and private? What is on display and what is hidden within ourselves? So Lena made a lot of visual experiments. She was really engaged and invested in the idea of artistic research, but also what happens in that process of, say, boredom and solitude. And for the impact components, and uh, I think you, you heard Petra speak about, we have these three components for the master's project, which is writing, visuals, but also impact. Um, Elena engaged with the idea of sending out postcards um, to people who could then enter within what she called a solitude booth, where you could write your own thoughts, and then a year later, these thoughts would actually get mailed um, back to you. So that's Elena uh, Holzer. Our next one that we'll show you here, this is a student, Alexa Vachon, who is actually studying a PhD right now in um, Canada. And her project is called Skin Berlin. And she uses the site as a, um, or she, sorry, she uses the body as a site of rebellion. So what that means then is questioning in which ways does power, agency, opposition, and emancipation make itself manifest in and through and with photography. So what she also did is start asking about certain issues of consent and ethical dissemination. That was a very much a key component of her work was the aspect of circulation. What happens to photographs when they start moving beyond, say, the maker's uh, manifestation of that? So what this is really about for Alexa was about controlling who the audience is, which in a way is working in sort of paradoxical relationship to photography, where the audience itself is sort of um, um, dispersed and fragmented. But she was asking, you know, what power then do the subjects themselves have in curating their own interpretations? So this also means questioning the power relations that are inherent in photography, but also asking, you know, how then is consent negotiated? And one thing that Alexa did, other than obviously working very intimately in a very particular uh, room in Berlin, was to publish small booklets, which could then be unfolded and disse disseminated uh, amongst very specific audiences. 
The third and final student we will show you here is uh, Walter Costa, who's from Italy. He graduated from the very first cohort, and his project is about looking at the trafficking of antiquities in the Middle East and North Africa. So that's really looking at uh, how uh, illicit antiques are both um, sold, but also digitalized uh, in a specific form via Facebook. So his project is, is looking at photography's role as a facilitator, but also revealing the supply chain of, of illicit antiquities. And again, going back to the question of impact, and that's what these two images that you see on the screen here, Walter made what he calls an archaeological, an, uh, an archaeologist, archaeologist toy. Uh, the idea with this toy was to trigger people's um, interest, you know, to make them curious, to come closer, to see the object as a way to make a dialogue in and itself. And one thing that he found out that people were actually quite engaged with the questions that he was also asking. And this toy was wrapped up in uh, wrapping paper, as you can see in the image here, which became sort of a device to transfer information. And as he says, it's about disseminating trafficking in 30 by 30 centimeters and really understanding the say the illicit pathways and contributions, but also photography as a, as a resistor to the way that um, certain patterns can say behave and operate. So those are just three very simple, uh, very quick uh, uh, inferences of what some of our alumni get up to. Thank you for presenting those. And we encourage you to send uh, your applications. And I will remember the first deadline is March uh, 1st and uh, the second deadline is uh, May the 1st. Yeah, so we have two deadlines. Hopefully we'll have your applications uh, coming in soon. Um, the next part of our project will be uh, a Q&A. So some of you have already uh, sent in your couple of questions, so we've been um, monitoring that. So we can actually start immediately right here. There's a question from Anonymous which is about collaboration with other master programs at the KBK, for example, with nonlinear storytelling. Yeah, nonlinear storytelling and, and photography society, there seems to be a pretty good um, balance between that. But Shadman, what do you think, uh, uh, how does collaboration with the other master programs operate here in the academy? What has changed? Well, that's a very interesting question because this uh, question is also being asked uh, at all levels in the academy. How do we improve collaboration? And um, because we see opportunity there and all the departments see opportunities there, we often meet and we are um, now in the process of creating a structure that supports collaboration in a more um, structured way. But uh, for now we have a smaller collaborations amongst uh, departments. For example, we collaborated with Master of Art, uh, Artistic Research uh, and we're still collaborating with them on, um, I believe you started that uh, during your time, uh, which was uh, the... Um, loads of research. Loads of research, but also the lectures uh, yeah. that are organized by Adam Broomberg, one of our teachers. So that's a tiny collaboration that we're doing. Uh, we also collaborate with Inside a lot, uh, often. And so these smaller collaborations, one-on-one -on -one collaborations are ongoing at all times. And uh, students can also come up with their ideas of uh, what collaborations can mean and, and what we can do together. Uh, but it's interesting that you asked this question because we're working towards a more structured way of looking at collaboration. Yeah, and also in MAPS 1, in Studio 3, which is the, the major uh, uh, project in the second semester, students are um, collaborating with external organizations. For example, the International Committee for Missing Persons a couple of years ago. Last year, the students collaborated with um, uh, an environmental uh, justice um, um, uh, organization called STAB. Uh, so there are all different kinds of collaboration that actually happen, so internally and also externally. Okay, lots of questions starting to flow in. Um, 
There seems to be a few about the notion of the application. So uh, referring to the application from Robin, the sooner the better, but also there's another question here about applications, the difference between priority uh, deadline and then the May 1st, because as you see, we have March 1st and a May 1st. What's the difference between a March 1st and a May 1st deadline? Well, the and is it better to be in first or last? Well, um, of course, uh, the uh, sooner you send in the deadline, the easier it is for us to move, look deeper into your work and it increases your chances of getting in because as you know, which is a great thing about our program, is that we only have 12 students each year and there are hundreds of applications. And it's best if you send us in your portfolio during priority deadline. And as a result, uh, we get more time to analyze uh, those portfolios. So by then, it's not, uh, we, we won't say that there won't be any space left by May. That almost never happens. But some of the spaces are already uh, reserved for portfolios that are extraordinary that we receive in. That it's always best thinking. to get things in sooner rather than later. Um, so if you can make it by the March 1st, that's great. Or sometime in March, that's always a great moment to be there. Um, there's also a couple of questions here about portfolios. Um, why don't we hear from um, maybe Pascal or, or uh, Bea about the portfolios that you submitted? Because obviously it works because you made it here. So Bea, why don't you share uh, what you did for the portfolio and how you sort of interpreted the, uh, the, the requirements yeah. of the portfolio? Because it is specific what we have. Well, asked. I would say that um, a good portfolio could contain um, works that um, are not only um, photography, but if you have also something else, I think uh, at least um, that was what worked for me. Um, you can show also other kind of works. And I think this is something that enriches uh, what you do. And, and also it gives um, to, to who is choosing, choosing an idea of your background. So. Um, in in the moment they are um, we are thinking about um, the group to make then uh, it's also important to have an idea of um, a more complete um, view of what you do so uh, yeah I would say um, uh, sorry I, I don't have the word but um, yeah being uh, diverse in, in what you show yeah. yeah. I would ask what I would add to that is that um, also um, going back to what Shutman has said in the beginning is that um, your personal um, approach is very much in, in very much the key to your portfolio and um, to really uh, um, go into and be honest about why and how you are um, um, are working with the medium, but also how you can uh, give insight into how you actually, um, how you, how you, how you do think about certain issues and how you want to further, um, yeah, um, just go on about them. Is, I think important as well. Yeah, there's also a sub question here, kind of going back to the question of of applications, because on the one hand we ask for a portfolio, but we also ask Other for. Writing. Yeah, a research proposal. So maybe yeah. you want to speak a little bit about that. The specific question here is, does it have to actually be tied to what I'll be doing at the academy? Well, that's hmm. no. <laughs> yeah, um, like um, I applied with a very clear. I mean, it's always um, important to apply with a clear idea, but I don't um, I don't necessarily um, then think it's necessary that you will have to do that all the time while you're here. Um, that's not even possible. So um, what I did was I um, I was doing my my own very personal project and 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 I laid that out in words and um, yeah I do think that is uh, um, like um, I do um, I do I do think it's key that that um, that it's really your project and that really your approach is key in what you want. Um, in what you want to work on, while well, in maps. 
Yeah, the research proposal is a way for the committee to really assess that you understand what it is that you're interested in and how is it that you want to proceed uh, working forward because you're coming here to study for a specific reason. What is it that you are seeking, but also what is it that you value or are interested in uh, as a photographer? Um, there's just a couple maybe smaller questions that I can answer very quickly. Just does this master start every year? Yes, it does. Um, applications always happen in the spring and we always begin in September. Um, there is a, a, a nice question here about the, the backgrounds of the students. I think that's a really good question because some of the other questions I've been getting here is, well, I have an MA in architecture, I've studied economics and such. So maybe for the students that are here, you could sort of just give us very briefly a little bit about your background, what you were doing before you came here. Uh, so I was um, in Hanover and in Aarhus studying uh, for the journalism and um, then um, I finished that in, in the end of 2018 and then it developed further into a filmmaking but then kind of returned back to um, yeah, photography. Uh, well, um, I, I studied um, design, so I have a bachelor in design and then I uh, switched, to, switched to photography. Um, and then, um, I have a background in journalism, uh, then I went to social entrepreneurship, then I went to the photo academy, uh, ending up here. Yeah, so what you have is somebody studying uh, photography, somebody <laughs> studying design and design practice, and uh, Petra is coming from journalism. So you can see that there's a diversity of the students who are actually here. Petra, since I have you right yeah. here, what about the portion of theory and practice in the courses? Can you maybe speak to the relationship between theory and practice? Yes, in the first year, um, I think there's there's a lot of uh, uh, theory, also practice, but also theory. And what I think is very good is that you learn to uh, apply the theory in your practice. Um, so, I mean, although we 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 did it, we we did advise the the first year because that's also very uh, good. I think to know that you as a student also have a kind of say in what you think is good or what might be uh, approved a little bit. So we had the advice to had a little bit more of uh, of really practical work. And in the second year, it's it's as I said, all about the making, which is making visuals, but also making writing text and the text is based on uh, the theory you read. So that's a real good combination of those two. Yeah, I think it's really important to understand that theory and making uh, are intertwined and that we really value theory, but we also value theory through the idea of, of making and doing and understanding it in such a way. Uh, the next question I think will be for Shadman. So while Shadman uh, is coming up here, there's a couple of questions about English. So I can just quickly uh, address the concerns of English. Uh, as you could probably hear right away, I'm a native English speaker, but everybody else you see on camera is actually, English is not their first language. So we are an English language program, but the majority of people, uh, English will be their second, third, fourth, or fifth language. And yes, you actually do need to have uh, English certification, I believe. Yes, you do ILTS yeah. 6.5. Yeah. I, I, IEL IELTS 6.5, yeah, that's, that's the minimum score. So, uh, Shadman, a couple of questions here, which maybe I could best summarize it as, what are you looking for in a student? What do you sort of hope to see? What's your sort of vision of, uh, of a prospective student? Well, that's, that's a very difficult question to answer because it can be so many things and the problem with answering that is because uh, it becomes narrower than it is actually. I think what is most important is that there is an intention to engage with society. Um, you can be a hermit, that's not a problem. The engagement can be on an ideological level. That is also, I guess, acceptable, but you you sort of express your ideologies through practice um, and you research through practice. But that being said, there should be an intention to engage uh, with society in a, in a material level and an ideological level. Other than that, if I say anything else, I think it becomes uh, too narrow. Um, 
we're really it's anything that can be interesting is fine. Well, I, I think you make a really good point here as well. Like the notion of being, say, engaged. Um, so on the one hand, you say we, we speak in, with and through photography, but maybe you could elaborate on that notion of engagement. Let's say the society aspect of photography in society. What do we really mean by that? Well, uh, what do we mean by society in general is a very <laughs> I mean, in relationship to the, <laughs> of how a student is, say, expected to have that relationship. So it's not just about hanging something on a wall, but we go further with that, right? Yes, to, so, so going out into the world. So the engagement, as I said, it can be on an ideological level. That means that you can be concerned with the problems of society, the history of society, how we function as society, the structure of it. You can be critical of it. You can be uh, finding solutions. You can be pointing at problems, it, it can be on, on different levels and it can exist in different times, your interests. It doesn't only need to be contemporary issues. Well, it, it is always contemporary and present, but you can place it in history and you can also look at the future with speculative work. So um, the engagement with society is through your work. That doesn't mean that you have to go out and always uh, have conversations with people and take on a sort of anthropological role, which is also possible, but I hope that sort of shows the range of things you can uh, do in order to engage. Yeah. Okay, uh, lots of questions flying in. Uh, we're obviously not going to be able to get to all of them. Um, we've only got a few minutes left, um, but here's well, there's so many questions we would like to answer, but perhaps in a different time we can we can we can elaborate also. Um, but here's a question from uh, Ben: How does MAP support alumni versus similar MA programs? I think this is a very good question because. Yes, sir. Well, exactly. We are looking into alumni programs, starting different ways of including alumni. As you can see, we have alumni included in the teaching team. I myself am an alumni and it is a constant question in our mind and we, we are constantly trying to find better and better solutions for alumni. But because as you know, the photographic uh, professional field does not have a specific structure where you can just graduate and, and enter and pass your life smoothly which I think is not a great problem, but also it poses us with new challenges. So I think what we are planning to do is create a think tank with alumni and see how we can expand the professional field of photography and we do it together. So as long as you're in MAPS, you're always part of this community and we move, we are always connected and you can always use MAPS as a hub uh, for your practice. But at the same time, we have structural uh, courses and such implementing from next year, hopefully, that supports alumni even better. Okay, let's have our last question because uh, a couple of them have come in and maybe for Shadman, uh, you can solve this one. Uh -huh. But there's sort of this idea of the expanded notion of photography. So I see here somebody's asking about the relationship between sculpture and photography, you know, experimenting in the medium. And then elsewise, I saw something around, um, does it mean that we can accept uh, painting and other forms of, of image making? Maybe you want to be specific on what we mean by being expansive. Well, sculpture is a specific field and if you bring in sculpture, sculpture can be collaboration with photography. If you look at object based works uh, that, that has existed, I'm not going to name references now. Uh, sculpture and photography has always been in collaboration. For example, if you look at uh, 3D printing and there are aspects of sculpture there as well. But as I said before, we're not multidisciplinary, we're interdisciplinary, which means that it's not a multidisciplinary. We are looking at the world through photography and the expanded field would mean for me how i define it is are is it following the basic principles of photography or not so if you call if you say painting then it might be a, too distant from the basic principles of photography because it has its own technique it has its own history and it has its own um, sort of place in the world um, and it's a different medium altogether but if you talk about, for example, 3D modeling, and if you look at Blender and how Blender works, um, 
you have to have photographic knowledge and you have to set up a scene by understanding photographic principles and therefore it is an expanded notion of photography. So um, I hope that sort of answers the question by, because uh, it, it's a discussion we can keep having and it's not so rigid, it's a malleable sort of boundary that we create for ourselves. Um, but yeah, let's, let's have a discussion about it. Uh, yeah. Yeah, I'm, uh, I'm furiously typing some quick little answers to some of the uh, questions here, but we'd like to just round out the day with uh, Petra, uh, who's uh, in currently second year, and she's going to share a few uh, things that are just happening outside of the main uh, program. In the meantime, I will be trying to answer your questions as best as possible. Yes, yeah, so we're not only studying, we also do some extracurriculum things. Uh, the links of what we're doing will be in the chat. For example, um, we have been uh, doing a podcast with Ben Smith uh, of A Small Voice. We did a workshop with him. You can find it on Spotify um, and it's called Photography Society, the podcast. Uh, three of my colleagues formed a new experimental visual platform aiming to stretch the boundaries of photography and map new territories. It's called, I hope I pronounced it right, cartographydigest.com. Um, together with two other colleagues, uh, I make a radio show at Mushroom Radio, which is the KBK radio station, and it's called Third Eye, and it's about unlearning patriarchy or feminism, whatever way we call it. Um, and just one last thing, because I want to invite you um, for our online launch event this Monday, the 24th, of January at 7 p.m. Um, so, and we have been collaborating, so you can see a little bit how it works to collaborate with an with an outside uh, uh, party, which with STEP, which is a legal advisory body that conducts research into environmental issues for the Dutch Council of State. Um, and inspired by their work, um, we created 11 unique stories investigating contemporary env environmental, social, and personal issues of coexistence. This Monday um, we will present it and I hope you will be able to uh, to uh, uh, attend that um, and the link is a zoom link and you can see it also through um, the, um, uh, the chat um, and I think for now we can close it off um, so thank you for listening um, hope you are very inspired um, and um, we'll, we'll do the admission and hope we can see you uh, next year. Um, so thank you for watching. Yeah, let's just maybe one last thing because there's lots of questions here. We are open to sending uh, emails. You can contact our coordinator or Shadman Shahid, who's the head of department and maybe give you a little bit more clarity. But also a lot of the questions that I see here can very much be answered by the student administration as well. Uh, check the website, there's also an FAQ section and more details um, can be there. So we look forward to seeing your portfolios, yeah. right? Yeah. All right. Okay.